With the search having gone nowhere for weeks, the massive multinational effort is now entering a new stage with cutting-edge radar, sonar, and state-of-the-art satellite imagery. Joining us with more radar expert Greg Charvat, author of Small and Short-Range Radar Systems and an advisor to MIT's Media Lab. Greg, good morning. Thank you for being here. So there's so many different things we're talking about. Sonar, radar, satellite, as we mentioned there in your introduction. How are they all different? Well, the satellite is basically like a camera in space. It just takes pictures and sends the data down, just like the recent imagery we have from China. When, when you look at this here, uh, the image that, what, what is it actually picking up? Uh, what, it, what it's seeing is, it's just an optical image. It's like as if you had a Polaroid camera, you right. know, in orbit, looking down, snapping photos. That's all it's doing right now. We've seen so many of those images again and mm -hmm. again now. Are those real time? Because one of the things we're consistently hearing from all the experts that we've spoken right. to is that the difficulty is you see something and then there's immediately a drift because this is such rocky terrain. Right. Are those images real time? The satellite imagery is not real time, generally speaking, but the radar imagery is from the aircraft. When they're scanning and flying and scanning, that's real time imagery they're looking at. That's the difference. So what about radar, Greg? Radar is, you know, from space down to the ocean searches the surface for anything out there. You can imagine this is the radar. It's just scanning, looking for debris. So what is the weather? How does the weather affect that? Well, that's a fantastic question. So if you think of the surface of the ocean, it, to radar, it's like a liquid metal, like the liquid metal guy from Terminator 2. If we take a look at this model here, we just have a piece of aluminum foil and a piece of what could be aircraft fuselage. Calm seas, no problem. Right. When it gets rough, it Part becomes obscure, yeah. yeah. But what's worse, if there are lots of little pieces like this, okay, calm seas, we can see them. But now it's rough. Little guys, little pieces are harder to see than the big ones. So the, the, the weather, which is supposed to get worse down there, is going to be a problem. Yes, it will, yes. That's their challenge right now. So when you think about the difference then between what the radar is picking up, what you've shown us, yes. and what the sonar is picking up, what is the sonar responsible for? The, the sonar, as far as I know, is not in play yet. The reason why is sonar searches below the waves and has a very limited range on the order of maybe 5,000 meters, so five kilometers. That's it. That's all you have for search And sonar. then sonar wouldn't pick up anything that would be down there. It could, but, but it's like, but searching with a sonar, it's like taking a pencil and drawing a line across the map. It's a really thin line of search. Right. Radar's got 90, you know, nautical mile radius. Right. Big search area, satellites, big search area, sonar little. So in the Indian Ocean, which in some places is 13,000 feet deep, the yeah. sonar is not going to be much help at all. Well, it may be help, but it's, it's not in play yet because they're looking to search volumes and volumes of area. So mm -hmm. maybe later they might get the sonars out. Not so yet. given your area of expertise, having a you know, an in-depth knowledge of how these different techniques are used. Yeah. What is your best guess for if we're looking for debris, where how we're going to find it? I think probably right now your best guess is on the surface of the ocean. Hope to find something floating and something look through buoyant. that debris. Yeah, yeah. All right, Greg Shervat, thank you so much for being with us this Thanks. morning. Thank you.